Yeah, so the metaverse, uh, unlike the fancy and commercial headlines about buying digital real estate next to Snoop Dogg, the rapper, and all this uh, hype around it, it's really distracting from the real message and purpose of what we've explored with the metaverse is to use it to transform education and learning. And most importantly, to take young individuals from low income, marginalized communities and upskill and reskill them into developing this next generation of the internet, particularly because it's a non-coding coding environment. So a, a, an individual like Samantha, who is an art major, 20 years old from a, a community like South Central Los Angeles, is actually exceptional and has a professional career now in that space. And that's the exciting thing about the metaverse that is the reality versus some of the hype that we're hearing with NFTs and blockchain and crypto and metaverse. So that's where we're focused. Well, so there are a few areas. One is we're working with schools in low income communities right now in Chicago, Florida, and Los Angeles, but we're also working internationally. And it's giving teachers and students and principals new abundant skill sets to create imaginary spaces that let them teach in a way that brings students and engage them in these immersive and experiential learning models. So we've all been working on developing four types of pedagogies in education and learning on how you can actually use the metaverse for this purpose. And what I would say is that it is a superior model for some topics than what you could do in a classroom setting or on digital online learning. And that is not only because it's engaging, but you can bring environments to life that get the brain to receive these signals in a way that, that is more effective for learning. And there's efficacy studies that have been done that demonstrate that. Yeah, just like any technology, artificial intelligence, or even fire, there's pros and there's cons, <laughs> any invention. With the metaverse, it's the same way. I mean, it's really surprising how realistic these environments have become just in the last year. The price is coming down significantly. But with that, you have to consider, yes, it can be used for education and learning, but also um, escapism, isolationism, even some forms of addiction are gonna be prevalent with this new capability because it's so realistic. So we really have to be cautious in terms of, you know, how we use it for positive things, but also how it can be somewhat negative and even addictive in some cases. I'd love to introduce my, my friends and colleagues here. They helped me co-found the, the nonprofit Exponential Destiny. And specifically, Pablo, um, a 20-year-old, we just turned 20, and he was a graduate of the public high school in South Central Los Angeles. And he's actually one of our technical experts because he uses technology to bring images from the real world into the virtual reality metaverse world. Do you want to share that, Pablo? Yeah, Mark, thank you. So, so in my work, that there's two, there's two different uh, paths that I, I could take in, in doing this, right? Uh, one, one path is I'm actually an FAA licensed drone pilot. Um, and, and in my work in Expo, I've taken my drone, uh, gone out and scanned the topography of, of an area to then bring that into virtual reality to be interactable. Um, and then the, the second route is I can take my phone right here, right, um, and use LiDAR, which is a dot projection uh, uh, piece of software that I, I can use to scan any object of any size and bring that into virtual reality with, with, in just a few minutes with all free software. And Samantha is one of our leaders. She's our chief storyteller. She's an art major, uh, also from South Central Los Angeles. And uh, Samantha, why don't you describe the work that you've done with some of the schools? So some of the work we've done with the schools is pilot programs. And a way to get the schools engaged and to adopt this new method of education is to gamify the process. We get a school, break up into teams, compete against each other, and see who comes up with one of the best uh, <laughs> rooms around our topic, specifically in virtual reality. And that's actually the way they stay entertained, is the gamification process. It's the, the challenge of trying to beat the other teams, so they try to create the best possible experience.
Well, yeah, definitely so. I mean, that's why we came to the ITU Summit to talk about this. Um, it's, a little, it's a little bit of a Wild West complicated space. I mean, you have multiple factors and the interoperability is gonna be a big challenge. I mean, Pablo, who's our Chief Technology Officer, can probably describe it best. Earlier I mentioned two uh, paths I use and two uh, pieces of tech that I use. I use drones and LiDAR. And, and just making these two pieces of the hardware connect with each other and work seamlessly is a job in, in itself. And, and this is true, this is just two pieces of tech, right? In, in, in the industry, there's, uh, there's a, a mass, uh, I guess, growth in, in hardware, right? There's there's uh, haptic devices that, that are coming on the market now. Glo there's gloves, yeah, haptic devices, there's, glove devices, there's, there's suits that you now wear to give you vibration, all that hardware. There's vibrations, there's now tech and smell. Uh, there's, there's tech and smell as, as well as just uh, in, in the After Effects in, in, the, in the software, right? There's, and, and making these, these, uh, this work, uh, all these platforms work more seamlessly with each other in AR, uh, in, I'm sorry, in augmented reality, virtual reality, uh, in the haptic devices, um, and, and so on is uh, very important, important to the interoperability of, of it all. Yeah, I mean, quite frankly, the way we look at it is we have all these productivity tools we, it's a non-coding coding environment, so individuals like uh, you know from any background, an art major, can actually code in this environment. We akin that to, you know, Samantha essentially is a coding the next generation of the internet. But rather than having to learn HTML or JavaScript like I had to do in 1992 with the internet, she uses her art skill set and creativity skill set to basically get in these environments and manipulate things with her superpowers, which is about as hard as editing a TikTok video, right? It's not a coding, she writes no code, but you create these environments. So we can excel very quickly to, to do this. Our biggest bottleneck is, which is something hopefully the ITU is gonna take on, is what happens then when we have all these different headsets, all these different haptic devices, all these different eyewares that don't operate interchangeably and it slows us down technically. So the standards are pretty important here if we're gonna get this thing working effectively and delivering on its promise. This has changed my life dramatically. A year ago, I would never have imagined that I'd be sitting here one or even working at a nonprofit like Exponential Destiny. I had no clue that technology and virtual reality specifically was being used in these ways. I just thought it was for gaming and just having fun. So when I actually tried it and saw that I could just build things out and that makes the whole business, that it was amazing. It was so easy to learn and very entertaining to do. <laughs>